Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We're really excited to be here presenting information about our new program, MSIT. We do have a few people joining us in the attendees lobby, so I'm happy to have you all here. I will give those who might be um, joining a little late or dealing with any technical issues a few more minutes to join us. So um, let us know where you are tuning in from in the chat. You know, UO People is an online university with students all over the world. So I'm super excited to see where you guys might be from today. So I'm currently in Houston, Texas, um, hosting this webinar with our provost of the university, Marie Sini. Uh, where are you tuning in from, uh, Marie? I am tuning in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the University of Pittsburgh, where both Sarah and I have attended. So yes, we're good. Yes. So Super excited to be here with her today, a fellow alum for my university. So we do have um, uh, most of us here on the call. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with introductions first. Um, my name again is Sarah O. Oh. I'm the digital content producer here at University of the People. I help manage the YouTube channel, um, esports live streams, and a lot of fun things that we get to do at the university. Um, for our, um, I'm happy here to be co-hosting with our new provost. I'm going to let her go ahead and introduce herself to you. Hi, everybody. It's wonderful to be here and, and wonderful presenting with Sarah. My name is Marie Cheney. I'm the fairly new provost. I have spent my career working with um, students who are not what we might call the traditional age, um, adult students, folks who are um, doing other things with their lives and yet who want access to a, a, a quality education. So I am just thrilled to be here and thrilled to be working with all of you. Yes, super excited and honestly honored that we have a bit of your time today to talk a little bit more about this program. Because um, the MSIT program is something that a lot of students have been asking about for a long time, and I'm happy that we finally have that as an option here at the university. Um, for those who might not have ever been at one of our webinars before, welcome to your first one. Um, this webinar is set up for one-way audio only, so you will only be able to hear me and Marie. If you have any questions, you are more than free um, to use the chat to ask them. We have three great advisors on the call with us today. So if you have any specific questions, they will be able to answer those um, with a typed response. If um, for some reason you have any technical issues, feel free to just leave and come back to rejoin. This webinar will be recorded and it will be sent to you in an email afterwards. So if you have to leave because of an emergency or if you can't stay for the entire time, don't worry, you will be getting a recording of this information. So before we start, uh, we were recently featured on the Today Show um, and we really wanna show you guys um, how much our students are able to really prosper in their careers after they attend the university. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play this quick one minute video um, before we get into the actual presentation. So that was just a little bit about Elise. It was super exciting. Um, she was able to get her degree and actually you know, get into a super big tech company. They didn't mention it in the video, um, but she actually is now working for um, Google. So it's really awesome how she was able to get her degree from University of the People and now she's in a career that she's really happy with. So for those of you who might already be in a de degree program or who might be interested in joining a degree program but might not know much about University of the People, we are considered the education revolution. So we were actually founded in 2009 and we became accredited in 2014 by the DEAC and we are for the people and we're run for the, by the people. Um, we're high quality, affordable and accessible. And it really sets us apart from traditional universities across America. Going into a little bit more detail about that, as you can see on the screen, um, we do have a dean for our computer science program. We have a dean for all of our programs and our dean for our computer science program is also the dean for the MSIT program. Um, with our new provost here, she maintains that, she makes sure that our high quality education is maintained through rigorous um, processes and rigorous reviews. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit more about you know, how the MSIT came about and how we maintain the high quality of our programs at the university, Marie. Oh, absolutely, Sarah. Um, so you see, we have Dr. Alexander, I always mess up his last name, but Tutsilin. And we have a, a we have a group of people like him who are working for us, with us, to design the MSIT. 
And so they've told us what is the most, the latest and the greatest that we should have in that um, program. Because as you know, things change in, in computer science and IT like every day. So we're constantly going to the very best. We also talk to a lot of people in industry and we design the courses so that you are getting um, the very best and, and we have a capstone that pulls it all together. So you're not just taking a series of unrelated courses, you're actually gonna pull all that knowledge together. I will tell you, this is a fairly new program, but um, every year we actually look at the programs again. So we do a program review and make sure that they're always um, up to date. So we, we are really proud of that. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, a lot of people might think because we're online that um, it's an easy thing and it's definitely not. We want to make sure that our courses are quality, that you're learning things that you'll actually be able to gain real life skill sets from, career skill sets from. So we really do ensure that the materials that you are learning, materials that are um, open educational resources, meaning that you don't have to pay them at any cost to you. Um, we maintain the fact that they're high quality and they're rigorous. So you're learning things that you're actually going to be able to use in your career once you graduate from the university. And on top of the high quality, we make sure that it is affordable. Um, so a lot of people, they know about our tuition free promise um, and we don't have to, um, our students don't have to struggle. We have opportunities for them to apply for scholarships and different grants as well. Um, I know with the master's programs at the university, they do um, tend to be a little bit different than our undergraduate programs. Um, can you talk a bit more about how students are able to afford an MSIT at your people? Oh, sure. Look, we, we do charge an assessment fee and the assessment fee really goes towards um, there we ha we do have faculty who are very qualified in these areas um most of them um actually teach for less than they might teach elsewhere not because they're not good but because they're very committed to this mission of worldwide education that is very low cost for people so we have an assessment fee for the kinds of things that they will be um they have to be grading and they have to be giving you feedback and that's what you want from a good um, education. Our courses are fairly small. You're not gonna be in a course with thousands of students or even hundreds. You probably have between 20 and 30 students in any class. And so we charge about $300 for each course for this sort of assessment fee of the various materials and grading, et cetera. So that means altogether you are paying far less. There are, there are institutions where you would pay, the amount that you pay here for the entire degree um, you might pay two classes at another institution. So this is a very, very affordable degree. And as Sarah said, if you absolutely are in a situation where you don't have any money, you need to tell us that, and we have some scholarships available. So, you know, let us know, but um, we try to keep this very, very low cost for you. Yes, definitely. And especially not only is it affordable, but it is accessible. Um, you're not going to be joining some online class at a certain time of day every day. Your education is going to be molded by you. you can take your, you know, you can take your time to do your coursework at in morning, at night, on the weekends, from a beach, from your home, from the kitchen. It's accessible. Our students are all over the world. As you see here, this is a computer science student who lives in Liberia. Um, not all of our students have the best internet connection, so we want to make sure that our students are still able to access their course materials. They don't have to worry about potentially joining a class that they can't hear, the instructor speaking. All of our courses and all of the materials for our courses are accessible for all our students. So a lot of students might be wondering like, oh, will I have to, you know, join a class and will I have to talk or, you know, yes, you're going to um, do peer reviews and you're going to actually talk to your other classmates, but you can do it from anywhere in the world at any time. So it's really something that a lot of students truly enjoy about the university. Um, and online learning, um, because we're an online university, a lot of people wonder, okay, how am I going to learn? Am I just going to so I'm just going to read some textbooks. Um, do you want to talk a bit more about our online sh learning structure at UO People? Absolutely. Um, and I've been doing online learning and education for a, a long time. I, I, always, I saw the value in this when we first started having the internet because of the kinds of students that can't access education by going to a traditional university and sitting in class every week. So what you'll do is um, the, all the materials 
these open education resources. They are like textbooks, but they're digital and it's already embedded in the course. So you don't have to go buy anything. You don't have to look for something. You just go into your course and the materials are there. You will read things just like you do in a traditional course. Um, instructors will have things posted. The course will have materials. There might be videos, there might be exercises, but it, it's very well um, designed so that you step through each step. You're not gonna get lost. And then there are um, areas where you talk. When we say talk, it's text-based. So you'll be writing to each other you'll be discussing issues, you'll be answering questions, but you can go in any time of the day. And people find that this is a very good learning environment because if you've ever been in a big class and only a few people talk, if there's a discussion, that doesn't happen in online education. You all have a chance to, to respond to each other, to make your points and to learn that way. So the only thing you have to do is really make sure you go to class because when it's online, you, you know, you, you have to log in to go to class, but if you can get yourself in a regular mode, um, it is a very good learning experience. Definitely. And a lot of our students, it does take time. It takes trial and error. Um, not everyone is used to learning online or to being, you know, a fully online student or just being able to go into a course and look at all their materials. And we really do try to break down our courses week to week. So you're learning something new in each new week. And then at that final week, then you get assessed on everything that you've been learning. So it really is a, a you know, well thought out process and Moodle in particular, a lot of students are like, what is that? What does it look like? So I do wanna give you guys um, the opportunity to kind of watch this video that explains a bit more about our peer-to-peer -peer learning process in detail. That gives a little bit more insight into how our students are able to learn not only about their materials, but about cultures across the world. Um, I had a student recently that I um, co-hosted a computer science webinar with, and she told me how her best friend lives all the way in Hong Kong, and she's actually living in um, Zimbabwe. So it's crazy that, you know, now we're at the time um, in history where everyone is so connected and UO people really wants to make sure that our students are able to understand not only the materials that they're learning, but people from different cultures and different backgrounds. So many of you might be wondering, like, what is the student experience like? Are my classes going to be big? As Marie said earlier, our class sizes are small. Um, and this is something that a lot of our students enjoy because they're able to get that personalized attention they need from their instructor. Um, do you want to say anything more about, uh, you know, the student to faculty ratio or just how students are able to really be satisfied with their learning? We talk about peer to peer assessment, but I don't want anybody to have the idea that there's going to be a lot of um, that, that you won't hear from your instructor. When you think about peer to peer assessment, think about any time you're in a workplace. Who do you spend most of your time with? You spend most of your time with your peers working on things. So these are important skills to have, which is why we do that. But your instructor is there. You have a small class. You can ask questions. And um, the students who come out of our classes, I think really, once they understand what it's like and go through a couple of classes, feel really good about the experience. And look, more and more people are working from home. They're working virtually, just like we're running this. These are good skills for you to have from our education. Exactly, and especially working from home as well. We have plenty of students who are interested in that, especially when it comes to taking care of their family. Um, and you're able to learn great skills that you can apply to any work from home job that you choose to apply to after you earn um, your degree from the university. Speaking of jobs and careers, um, these are just a few of the places that our graduates actually work at. Um, places like Amazon, Apple, AT&T. I also mentioned um, from earlier on the Today Show that student is working at Google now. So there are major corporations and companies that are um, valuing a degree from UO people. And you have plenty of people that are you're in your network that are students from the university who will also be able to help you in your job application process. Um, a lot of students wonder, you know, is it possible to get a job or is it gonna be easy? We actually have a career services center at the university um, where students can get resume help, they can get cover letter help, and all of those things are things that will help them get an actual career or job after they graduate from the university. So if you're worried about your degree potentially not being recognized by you know, anyone, 
just know that these are just a few companies. There are plenty more that our um, graduates work at that are recognizing degrees from University of the People. And then talking about admissions, I know a few of you have either already been admitted to the program. Congratulations on making it into our new MSIT program or are in the application process. Those of you who have not been admitted yet or who are interested in potentially applying, these are the admissions requirements. I know that some people might be a bit confused about the um, documented like mathematical requirements. Do you want to talk a bit more about why that is required for the MSIT at UO people? Sure. So we want to make sure that you're ready for what you will be studying in the MSIT. And these courses that are listed, college level calculus or linear algebra or statistics, and a programming language that, that we need you to understand enough. There's some work on algorithms um, and you will be doing some programming. So these are some basics that would be very helpful. If you don't have them, you should talk to one of the program advisors about how you might get those. We do have courses that you could take ahead of time, um, or certainly you can try to you know, study this on your own if you're very good at that. Yeah, so it's important that you know we do want you to be set up for success. And without these classes, it might be a little bit more difficult for you to succeed with getting your MSIT degree. So there is a reason for why those courses are there. If you have knowledge in these courses, you will be set up for success with starting your MSIT degree. It's already difficult to learn online. It's different than traditionally going into school. Studying university is never easy for anyone, but if you do have these requirements, you will be set up for an easier admissions process and for an easier academic process once you start your degree for MSIT at the university. Um, and next, a lot of people, we are tuition free, so meaning that we never charge an upfront fee for courses and there is no enrollment or materials fees. So all of the software you'll be using, all of the um, textbooks or basically online resources you'll be using, you will not have to pay for that while you're at the university. You only have to pay a $60 application fee. We also do have instances where someone might not even be able to afford that application fee. If you run into that issue, please reach out to admissions at uopeople.edu. We don't want finances to be a reason why you can't get your degree, why you can't pursue your higher education, but you do have to reach out to us and let us know these things so that we can help you as much as possible. Um, I know we talked about a little bit earlier, Marie, about how the MSIT at the university is significantly cheaper than most MSIT degrees across most universities in the US. Um, those assessment fees and things like that, do you, for anyone who might have joined late, do you want to go into detail again about why we charge um, the $300 assessment fee at the end of the course term? Sure, because by the end, you know if you've committed and you've worked all the way through it, there are um, final projects. We really don't do sort of final exams where you have to sit and write, but, but you have to do real world things. And your faculty are spending a lot of time assessing and giving you feedback. So we do charge an assessment fee. And if you have transfer credits, which really in, uh, at a master's level, very few people do. But if you do, we do um, charge us a little bit for the mechanics of bringing those transfer credits in, far less than if you actually had to take the course. Altogether, you let's say you have no credits uh, for the master's coming in. Uh, if you ended up paying all of the assessment fees and finishing it, you would get the entire degree. This is for the entire degree for $3,660 US. Um, that's not per course. It's not per year. It's for the entire degree. Um, and so, you know, we're happy to keep quality high, costs low for you. And these are for the, the serious students who really want to be assessed for what they're learning. Yes. And a lot of people, they might have hard times, you know, Things happen, especially financially. We're still in a pandemic. Things are going on. So if there's any time that you come to the end of a term and you thought originally that you'd be able to cover the cost of a course, um, and then towards the end of the term, you find out something has happened and you don't have that financial backing anymore, you reach out to your program advisor immediately. You will be assigned a program advisor once you're admitted, and your program advisor will be there with you every step of the way at the university. So, you know, communicating when you're struggling is important at any point. And if you can, you know, pay for those things and do your best to, but making sure that you get your age education is our top priority at the university. So do not feel taken aback by these numbers. If you know that you cannot afford them, there are options available for us to help you. 
Um, and talking a bit more about the program itself, I know most people uh, might be wondering how long does the program take? Um, the program, that honestly depends on you. If you come in with transfer credits, if you take anywhere from two to three courses a term, it will change the amount of time that you'll have to spend on the degree. But you do have to complete 12 courses and that equates to about 36 credits overall. And um, there's also a capstone project at the end of your actual entire degree, not for each course term. Um, do you wanna talk a bit more about the courses available as well as the project that has to be completed once they're yeah. finished with their degree? Yeah, by the time you're looking at an MSIT, you're probably either already in management or you're hoping to, to move into a management level uh, position. And so the, the program is a combination of um, IT computer science courses, but also business courses so that you you really understand business needs. And, and you might be the person who's now running the IT department and people come to you with, we need a new customer relationship management system. We need to integrate a whole new SAP program of sorts. And so you need to understand the business needs and you need to understand IT and how to integrate across. There's, there's also coursework in um, organizational behavior because you, know, you can't do all of this without thinking about the people and how to work right. with people for these kinds of change management um, projects. And so the capstone really brings together everything. You're not just studying a narrow slice of the degree, but you might be given a, an ex a case study of a company and you are now the manager and you've got to put this model together for some sort of new IT system. So you'll be able to actually talk about this when you go on job interviews and say, well, the, here's the case study that I did. See, I can actually do this. So I think what was one more thing I want to say, you have to really give yourself these extra hours of study per week. Um, just like you would in a regular um, classroom, you have to do some studying. You're not going to be sitting in front of the computer doing everything. You do have to spend time reading, working through things, writing. And I think sometimes students do think, well, it's online, it won't be that hard. It is as rigorous as a regular face-to-face -face degree program is, and we're there to support you, but this is still you know, difficult in that sense. Not trying to scare you away, just be prepared. Um, you might have to have your family help you more. You might have to maybe not do certain things. Like I love to watch TV when I'm like really tired. Well, maybe you can't watch TV as much. You do have to figure out how to spend the time studying so that you can reach your goal. Definitely, and you know, especially for that, uh, many students, they hop in and they think that it will be easy, but we don't want our degrees to be easy. We want to make sure that they're rigorous so that you're gaining the skills you need and that you can actually talk about the things that you're learning at the university after you've left and once you started your career. Um, 15 to 20 hours a week is really the minimum for just one course. If you're taking two courses, then imagine double of that. So that's a 40 hour week of studying. That's a, a part time job, a full time job. So you do have to make that dedication to actually study if you want to succeed here. It's not impossible. Plenty of our students do it. And we do have a lot of study groups that are created by students to help one another. We have these study groups on Facebook. We have a platform called Yammer. Think of it like Facebook, but only for you know, people, students. Um, students connect with each other on WhatsApp and Discord. So our students know that they do need to study and they do know that they need to help one another to succeed here. So don't feel like you're gonna be alone or if you aren't that good at studying by yourself, you have opportunities to still study with other students um, virtually because we're an online university and our students are great at connecting with one another um, online. So a bit more about our students. Um, this is a video by um, one of our students who actually is working for NASA now. So I'm gonna showcase this um, and let Rodrigo talk a bit more about this computer science program. So that was just a little um, quick video uh, by Rodrigo <laughs> working for NASA now. Um, he's really excited about being there. And it's really awesome that he's given this opportunity because a lot of people might be wondering or might have really big dreams and might be thinking, am I going to be able to actually work anywhere that I want to? And you are more than, that's more than capable. You're more than um, welcome to. Um, this is another student of ours um, in Batadem. He actually is a business administration student. And like we said earlier, um, not only are you going to able to, are you going to be able to learn 
IT skills, but the MSIT is a mixture of business and um, IT skills. So as one of our business students said, um, attending UO People has, one, has been one of the best decisions he's ever made. Every class has challenged him and improved his knowledge and skill set. So that's really what we want from our students. We want you guys to be challenged. We want you guys to be able to improve the skills that you already have so that you can become even greater workers once you leave the university. And I know many of you might be wondering about the application process. About half of you have already completed the application process. But for those of you who have not even started yet, you can go to uopeople.edu and apply today. Um, today is actually our application deadline for next term. So if you're someone who has been contemplating this for a really long time and doesn't know for sure if they want to come to the university, honestly, try it out. You only have to take one course. The only thing you're paying up front is that $60 application fee, and you're not going to be required to pay for anything else until the end of that course term. So if you're interested, definitely think about it and look at this process. Um, I don't know if you know too much about the actual application process, Marie, but do you want to talk a bit more about, you know, applying for the MSIT and how that can really just help students in their careers? Well, sure. And, um, you know, I agree. If, you're, if you are really interested and committed and you think, yeah, I really want to do this, but I just don't know when, um, you know, there's no time like the present to just say, I'm, I'm going to do it. But I'm going to ask you to make a promise to yourself, like commit and do it, because we're going to give you every chance. We're going to give you every opportunity. But you have to be the person who says, OK, every week I'm going to devote this much time to it. And it's really important that you do that. So you go and you start the application. Um, you're going to get um, everything that you need. You're going to confirm all the details. You pay the application fee. We make it very simple. We'll ask for some documents so that um, we know that you have a, a baccalaureate degree. Uh, if you have transfer credits or if you um, are a, a, if you are a proficient English speaker but you don't necessarily have the proof of that, we can work with you on that. What I'm saying is there's there's a lot of um, opportunity here to talk to your enrollment advisor to make sure that you get through here um, in a way that you, you're feeling comfortable about. You enter the funding amount and then you've got your spot. And so um, I would say enter it with um, excitement and happiness and commitment. We'll, we'll help you get through. We make this part easy um, so that you can focus on the learning. Learning is where we want you to actually spend time working hard. Exactly. And at any point, I know tech technology is still technology, things happen. If you ever are applying and you see some type of issue or you're having a hard time getting through any of these steps, feel free to reach out to admissions at uopeople.edu. They get emails every day and they reach out to people on a daily basis to try and help them with this process. For the most part, we've heard great things about the application process. Most of our students don't have that, but technology happens, uh, you know, issues happen that we're not aware of, but just let us know. Um, we never want you to feel like we don't want you to apply and that's why you're getting some type of error message. No, we want to make sure that we can fix any issue that you might be having because if you're having it, it's likely that someone else might be having it and that can just help us as a university continue to improve our application process. So make sure if you're interested, I know a lot of you have already been accepted into the MSIT program. Congratulations again. But if you have not been accepted into a program, if you're contemplating applying to the university, please apply today. Um, you know, there's no better time than the present to get started on your education. So just go to uopeople.edu and you can create your account to start your application. And this month is Women's History Month. Um, I know there are not as many women in IT as there are men, but I do want to take the time to um, highlight some you know, women educators and talk about the importance of women in education. So I'm going to showcase um, this one last video for the day so that we can celebrate women educators for the month of March. That was just a brief little video for our um, educational women's in education month. Um, you know, this is Women's History Month, and we do want to highlight all of the women educators that we have on our council. Um, these are women that help, you know, continue to improve the university on a daily basis. For those of you who might have any lingering questions, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat. 
We do have a few um, advisors who have been on this call answering all of your questions, giving you guys a link to important websites. I see that most of these questions have already been answered um, either multiple times or um, in advance. So I hope you all um, really were able to get a better understanding of our MSIT program. Um, and I'm gonna let Marie um, talk a bit more um, before I let us head off for today. Do you wanna say anything else to the viewers um, before we head off and end the webinar? Yeah, it, it's most important, I think, that you keep in mind your goals. And if you have goals, don't let yourself, you know, you might say, well, if I, if I start this, I'll be 44 by the time I graduate. Well, guess what? You're going to be 44 anyway, even if you don't right. go into the program, right? So I always say to people, do it. And I want, I know you can do it. We're there to help you. You're going to have to work hard, of course, but that, that will make you proud. But I really can't wait until the day that you graduate, all of you who are going to start this program. And hopefully there will be a real graduation. Uh, and if not, we'll have a virtual graduation and hand you your diploma. And that's always the best day for all of us, you, you and your family included. Um, but it's about having those goals and, and moving every day towards them. And so I do hope you'll join us. That's why we created University of the People. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you all. Um, and once again, thank you. Have a great day or night. No matter where you are, don't forget to join the education revolution because the deadline to apply is today. Um, and we will see you all on hopefully another great webinar. Bye, everyone.